Yes, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this webinar. Uh, I'm Rabia, your moderator for tonight, with Francine as my admin support. Thank you for joining us for a great sequel to the Google Forms webinar that was presented by Jen on August 27th. The original presenter for this evening, Nicole, uh, is not able to present. In her place, Jen will be presenting part two of Google Forms. Um, and Tessa Ontario will be working with Nicole to find an alternate date for a Google Drive presentation. Uh, for more information on this, we will uh, uh, be sharing it through communication emails. So we all know Jen. Uh, she's an experienced continuing education instructor with the Thames Valley District School Board, a certified Google educator level two, um, Tessa Ontario webinar manager and video editor, Tessa London communications chair, and a current master's of education student at University of Ontario. Ontario Institute of Technology. She likes to keep current on educational technology for adult learners. She has presented webinars on educational technology topics such as Google Docs, Microsoft OneNote for creating digital portfolios, smart boards, blogging, Powtoon, and everything to do with Google Suite. So anyways, uh, so that's, uh, that's it. I'll hand it over to Jen for now. Uh, Jen. It's all yours. Excellent. Thank you all for coming out on this very hot uh, evening. Let me know. How's my sound? Can you hear me? Just give me a yes. You can hear me. It's OK. I'm a little bit concerned about that. <laughs> all right, good. So grab a cold drink, pull up a seat, take a knee, do whatever you need to do to uh, get yourself comfortable for the webinar tonight. And I'm going to get started. Um, Great. So uh, how many of you were actually in the first Google Forms webinar? Just indicate in chat if you saw the introductory webinar on Google Forms. Oh, did, did, okay. Well, the good thing for you, oh, you saw it in an archive, I was just going to say. So if you happen to miss the live version of it, you can review it in archive. And not only that, there is a Google Doc that I prepared that outlines everything step by step by step, and um, I will grab the uh, access to that. Uh, just give me a second, I'll pull that out here. Share that with you, copy link. Okay. This link that I've given you here, it should give you access to the, like I said, the Google Doc that I prepared just to show you how to use Google Forms. So I'm not gonna go into how to create Google Forms from, from the very beginning, but I will review a little tiny bit of it. Um, again, that's me. I think Rabia introduced me already. So we're gonna review Google Forms uh, briefly. That's so that you remember kind of how to find them and, and how to use them with your students. I'm gonna hopefully convince you or explain, a, present a good argument why digital breakouts are a good tool to use with uh, English language learners, in particular adult English language learners. And I'm going to show you how to design a digital breakout. It is fairly straightforward. There's only a couple of steps. So it's something that um, the tool is not complicated to use and students love them. And then I'm going to show you how to use Google Sites in order to house a digital breakout form. Now, what exactly does that mean? You'll find out. <laughs> And finally, although not in this particular order, I am going to get you to do a breakout activity. I am going to set you all up into what's called breakout rooms, which if you're familiar with uh, Tesla Ontario webinars, this will be the first time we've tried it. So as with the first time for anything, you know, <laughs> um, we'll see how well it works. And if it doesn't work, we'll all come back into the main room. Um, but I, it will be seamless, I hope, knock on wood. Um, I'll show you what I mean when I get there. All right. So I began my first webinar by asking, can forms really be this exciting? I think you know my answer. <laughs> yes, I think they can. Google Forms, in my first webinar, I talked about um, the reason why we use them initially for data collection. You can use them to create quizzes. And you can use them for what I call uh, considered to be active reading. 
Now, the choose your own adventure that I gave example of last time is definitely an example of active reading with Google Forms. Digital breakout is, is another way to use active specific scanning uh, reading techniques uh, in a way that's very creative and uh, engages the students with their critical thinking skills. So number one, obviously, like before, if you're going to create a uh, digital breakout uh, using the Google tools, you need to have a Google account. Now, you're not going to do this tonight, but you are going to see an example. Okay? So as you know, once you log into, or sorry, to log into Google, um, you just Google, and then it asks you to sign in. At the top of every screen, you see what looks like to be like a waffle shape. And now this waffle shape is also referred to as the nine dot. Technically, it's called your application launcher. If you click on this button, you'll see a number of icons that drop down. Usually, the most common ones will show up in here. And to begin with, you're going to look for Google Forms. Okay. All right. So I'm going to actually walk you through the creation of using a digital breakout activity with adult ESL or ELL learners. And then I'm going to give you a chance to actually do one yourselves. So to begin with, what are digital breakout rooms? Well, have you ever heard of the phenomenon called escape room? Just indicate in the chat box if you've done an escape room or if you've heard of, of this experience. <laughs> Good. A couple people have. Yes. No, never. Okay. If you've never done them, essentially what it is, it is um, it's an activity. It's a, you get together with some friends and you go to this place that, that has escape rooms. It's like kind of like a mystery. There's all of these clues in one room. You and your group of friends are locked in, and the idea is that you have a certain amount of time, I think 60 minutes, in order to solve the problem and break out <laughs> of your room. So a bunch of educators were part of this experience and then thought, hey, can we do this in the classroom? So, well, teachers were a bit of a creative bunch, so we thought, yes, of course we can. Hence the term, uh, hence the creation of digital breakout rooms because, you know, we're not actually supposed to lock our students in a room. So to create a digital breakout, well, first you're going to determine the theme of your mystery or your clues. Now, anyone that's doing modules in PBLA, you might be working on, um, say, Canadian citizenship or um, medical things like going to the doctors or shopping or you know, anything else. So you've got a theme already created. So now you're going to decide, so what kind of clues am I going to create? Now your clues have to be a combination of letters and numbers. Then you're going to create your Google Form, a Google Site, Preview, and Share. I'll show you what that's like in here. All right. Yeah, so essentially this is a this is the, what the teachers decided when they went to a, an actual breakout room. They decided, hey, there's got to be a way to do this with our students. So digital breakout rooms are actually quite popular now in K-12 and higher education. And there's a group called Breakout EDU. Now, I'll give you the link to this because it's got a lot of really excellent resources. And when I first saw it, I thought there's a lot of this, a lot of these materials can be used and applied for out ESL learners. So that resource is coming up. Okay. So essentially, breakout rooms, well, they use the form. Now, it's a really basic form. But what they do is they, um, you create a number of questions or codes. Now, depending on your student levels, um, for lower levels, I would maybe do four clues because it can take them a long time to, to work through it, especially if you've got them working in teams. Um, you know, four to seven clues is usually good. Clues can be put into slides in a Google Doc. They can be in a drawing, in a thing link. The main idea in digital breakouts is that students or learners work together in teams in order to decipher the clues. 
right? Now the whole, how it works, how digital breakouts actually work in Google Forms is through a function called response validation. So in Google Forms, when you're creating the forms, the creator can validate either text or numbers. And usually digital breakouts is a combination of both. So step one, you're gonna begin by creating a basic form. You do that by going into your Google waffle or your nine dot, and then you click on create or start a new form. Again, what should it look like? Four to seven codes maximum. I would stick closer to four or five, because like I said, it can take students a long time to work through the clues. Right, so you've got your blank template started. You're gonna add a theme or a color by clicking on the little paint icon at the top. Right. And, or you can choose a background such as those. All right, so here comes the hands-on part. Now, I'm gonna break everybody into groups and I'm gonna just, before I explain to you and show you in detail about how to create it for your students, I'm gonna give you a chance to experience a digital breakout. So Rabia, I might need your help for this because I'm gonna have to grab. Okay. Okay, okay. and copy this. So, I'm working on two different browsers here. Just give me a second, oops, okay. Rabia. Yeah. And ju just Robbie, can you click on that link and just to make sure that that works? Uh, yes, it looks like it is working. Yes, it says okay. digital breakout. Yep, it is working. Okay, because it doesn't click for me when I do it. It doesn't work for me when I'm doing it. Let me try okay. again. Okay, it, it, it did work for me in the chat box. All right. I'm, all, I'm just concerned because I, it says I'm in edit form here. All right, all right, I'm gonna try this one again. Copy this one here, I'm gonna come back in here. Try it, Command V. Now try this link here. Okay, I'll... Uh... That should get you straight into a digital breakout. Yes, it does get me to the same room, I think. Uh, yes, it's the same one. Okay, so okay. what I'm going to do right now, um, make sure everybody opens so everybody needs to click on this site but i'm going to actually divide you into groups you're going to be in separate groups and you're going to have five minutes to work through and solve this specially designed digital breakout for you so let me try this breakout rooms we've got 60 people let's say six rooms and I'm going to give you five minutes. <laughs> so how many people were able to break out uh, or solve all the problems, all the questions that we had in the uh, quick, well, five minute breakout should probably normally be about 30 minutes, but not in a group. Did you at least get through one? One of the, did you get one of the locks to open? Yes, we, we did one. Uh, we managed, we managed one. That was the mm, the misspelt word. So, like I said, that was only about five, maybe now a ten minutes uh, in a digital breakout, and that is a really basic one that just incorporates using a Google form and a Google Doc. So, um, oh, Sheila escaped. Excellent. <laughs> um, so the whole point is that you have access to, uh, well, to clues or questions in a reading maybe it's a multiple choice maybe it's a sentence arranged maybe it's identify um, some vocabulary that they need to do in a particular module um rabia let sheila know she needs to refresh can people still hear me other people still hear me just indicate in the chat if you can hear me good okay lost in the breakout room forever all right it's one for the books. Now we know what to do and or what not to do. Problems. Okay. Refresh. Okay. Thanks, Rabia. So I'm going to go on 
hopefully, like I said, the, the webinar is being recorded. I'm hoping you're able to get back in to, and to listen to it because understanding how to make your digital breakout uh, interactive, I'm going to show you how to do that here. The trick is actually in a function called response validation. So essentially it means that when you're creating the question, you're creating a specific code that the user or the learner will need to then enter exactly in order to go on to the next question. So the key is to make your question required in the drop down menu. You need to make sure description and response validation has been selected. I'd like to know about the, uh, yes, I'll show you. I'll show you all the answers. Okay. Uh, so here's an example of the digital breakout. Now this is the one that you were just on. So I'll maybe maybe make this a little bit bigger. If I can make the screen a bit bigger. Okay. So I included so the five letter word lock included the instructions. Now when you're doing text validation, the one thing you need to remember is that uh, case counts. So it's best to keep everything in uppercase so that you don't have people mixing cases or using lower cases. Um, and then that's how they can get the answer. So when you've got your required button on and your three buttons pushed, description and response validation are selected. You're going to put in your, your question. You're going to choose um, text, contains. So the word that was misspelled, everybody got that one right, yes? And yes, good. So the word that was misspelled was usual, but the instructions, I think, said to spell it correctly. And then you also have the option to give um, a support answer if they've, if they've gotten it wrong, try again, keep going, that sort of thing. And in the number lock, when you put in, let's say, for example, in this case, I had um, paragraph. Uh, so five sentence paragraph, the students, typically how I would see that is students would be working together around laptops or a computer lab in groups of three. They'd be looking at the doc and then they'll be working it out amongst themselves. What sentence goes first and they'll be collaborating or offering ideas. And while they're doing that, they can actually enter their ideas into the lock. They can, so the actual code was 35124. And if they got it wrong, try again. So the whole idea is to get the students to look at a particular set of sentences and then determine uh, collectively, well, which sentence do we think should go first? What do we think should go second? Well, look at here, here's first, next, here's some of these words or these indicators, and then go from there. So the whole idea is that students are working together to solve whatever problems you've posed, whether it be grammatical, vocabulary, review, uh, warmer, that kind of thing. I still see we're still having some issues with people hearing, uh, and I hate to go forward uh, leaving them behind, but um, I'm keeping an eye on our time here so we can have time for questions at the end. Three, four, one, five, two. Yeah, that might have been. I think I actually ended up changing it around if that was the correct answer. Right? So how you do that, right? You just enter. Uh, yeah, I'll answer that question in just a moment. So number, you're going to choose. So you've, you've, you've chosen a data validation. This, in this case, for the paragraph, the sentences, you're going to choose number, not text. And then you're going to enter the number in here like this equal to is in the drop down menu and then you're going to ah where to go <laughs> equal to and then you actually put the number so whatever the paragraph numbers uh, were 35142 or whatever it was it would go right beside it and that's the only number it will recognize as being correct and then you can put in your custom error text if they make a mistake what are you going to tell the students you know Think about it again, or give them a clue. Look at the um, look at the indicators, whatever it is that you've been you've been teaching. Okay. 
Um, Francine asks the questions, can these activities be done synchronously or asynchronously? Both. Uh, for group work, I really like getting the students to work together uh, synchronously, but you certainly can have them done uh, asynchronously, which means if you've got a blended learning class and you set up an activity such as a digital breakout based on a reading or something that they've done, yeah, they can certainly be done asynchronously. The teacher would have access to all the responses in the forms once they've all been completed. So uh, they can be done either way. Just depends on what you want to do with them, right? right? Make sure required has been selected, right? So you can see if the students had decided to put in um, usual misspelled, it would say try again until they got it correct. Once it's correct, spelled correctly, they can go on to the next answer. Okay, And you can see right here, I've only got four of the five numbers put in. Uh, the digital val number, so the numeric validation recognizes this is incorrect, and it will say try again until they've got in the correct number. Okay. So, this is the one, I think it was the directional one, right? Five letter word lock. The direction the question said is a word that's been spelled incorrectly. That's fairly easy. Students can look through the whole article to find the misspelled word. Five digit number lock. Again, fairly straightforward. Now I gave one clue that was intentionally vague because I wanted the students to kind of say, wait a minute, what, what does she want here? I, I don't understand this. And this one works best when you're live, when you have the students synchronously in front of you because you really want them to put their heads together. Now, all they see is U equals up, E equals down, R equals right, L equals left. Put them all together, all caps. Did anyone solve the last part of the, the quiz? Did you find it? Excellent. Didn't get that far, okay. <laughs> I wanted to, um, no, okay. So that's okay, no problem. So I want you to go back into, I don't wanna risk losing anyone, so I'm not gonna put you in any more breakout groups and I'm not gonna, um, log out, but I want you to just open up the digital breakout one more time. And I want you to look at part two. Okay. Look at your directional lock. So directions up, down, left, right. Now I want you to read through part two. Every time you encounter, so Doris sauntered casually down, down. So the first one is D the path to the cemetery. She often walked up, <laughs> that's a U, to the end of the street. But today she was determined to do the right thing. So there's your R, for her health and walk for at least a few hours. She saw a small dog chase a squirrel uh, up, there's another U, up the tree. The squirrel was so scared he left, L left his nuts on the path. However, it was really the small dog's owner that caught her attention. Okay. All right. So that was the code. The up, down, left, right are prepositions or verbs, nouns, however they're used. The students, yeah, yes, do rule. <laughs> yeah, it's good. So that's actually the code. And that one would probably take the most time because the students are going to have to negotiate. Well, what do we think? You know, how, how it, this doesn't make sense. Eventually, they'll get it. You know, if you have to give them prompts or if you have to give them clues, um, you can. And that's actually when they enter something in wrong, your, um, the response feedback could be say something like, look very closely at the text or some kind of clue. Oh yeah, and then that would be part of your reflection, right? So Yvonne said that the students can complain is that they're not all being used as a sense of direction. And they're not, right? Left is actually past uh, the past tense of leave. 
and I think write was used uh, in a different way as well. So that would be a really good reflection for the students at the end to talk about um, that grammatical aspect of it or about the whole, the whole part of um, the, the whole story. Another reflection, and reflection is a big part of digital breakouts as well, is to you know, engage their creativity. So I think the story ends on it was, it was the dog's owner that really caught her attention, right? Get them to think, get them to create a next part of the story. What happened? Why was the dog's owner such a big deal? How does she know the dog's owner? Who is the dog's owner? Well, what do you think? It was really the small dog's owner that caught her attention. Give me some ideas in the chat box. Why do you think the dog's owner was important to Doris? He's a big burly guy. <laughs> maybe, maybe. That would, that would catch your attention for sure. Dog. <laughs> It could be somebody that she knew before from her past. Ooh, she's walking in a cemetery, right? Maybe there's something spooky going on. Her future husband, a zombie walking the dog? Possibly. All right, so in other words, you can see the kinds of conversations and what kind of language would be generated out of that. So speculation and guessing and propositioning. I think that maybe, or this could be the problem, or this could be the issue. So think about the kind of language that the students could do in that sort of a reflection activity following the breakout, right? Yeah, modals, right? I think that, or yeah, it's possible that any of those language functions could work here, okay? So you'll notice that I use both Google Sites, sorry, Google Forms and Google Sites together, just because I think it makes it a little bit cleaner to have everything on one spot, right? To use Google Sites, it is very straightforward. It's not that complicated today to make your own Google Site, and you can find it in your Apps Launcher, the nine dot, and it's usually right at the top. So when you're using Google Sites for the first time, make sure to choose new, not classic, because Google still has access to their old sites and they don't work quite as well as the, um, the so the classic sites, they don't work quite as well as the new sites. Um, new sites is actually a lot better for this kind of activity. I don't know if any of you guys are old enough to remember this great controversy here. Oh, Francine has said actually a pretty important point. She doesn't see the sites icon in her nine dots. If you don't see it, yours are just configured differently than mine. Just scroll down and do more. And then if you still don't see it, continue to do more. Eventually it will open up. Don't see your nine dot? Go back, okay. You need to be logged into Google. And when you're logged into Google at the top of your screen, your nine dot is right beside your name, like two spaces over. Okay. If you're not logged in, uh, you won't see a nine dot. Okay. All right. So when you create a new Google site, again, it's very straightforward. Um, Rosemary is asking, how do you log into Google? Is it about Gmail? If you've got a Gmail account, then you've got a Google account. And that will give you access to all of these apps. I'll show you a little bit more um, if we have time at the end. All right? So when you create the site, all you're going to have to do, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for you. You're going to have to title your page, give your site a title, and a site name. Right? It's just a matter of clicking and creating your title. And I tend to um, think that this banner image is a little bit big. So if you hover your mouse over the banner image, you can change the header type. And I did it just by changing it and making it smaller. 
and then I just made this page title, site title, heading title all the same, just to make it easier for me. Okay, good. All right, the insert button on Google Site, that's how you're going to get your Google Forms into your Google Site. So that's the first thing that you would see on Google Site, insert, and you can insert documents, and that's what I did. So the example I gave you had my document inserted on the right, and then on the left, that's where my form was inserted right beside it. So when you click on insert, Uh, Karen's asking about um, does sites link with classroom it can um, if you've got a classroom account and you want to put the link inside your classroom you can as long as that's the same account I think some classroom sites um, if if you've got a separate Google account they don't always uh, connect well because of privacy or um, not privileges but they don't always work when you've got classroom but yeah, if you've got a classroom site and then you open up a, a Google site, you can definitely put the link into your classroom. So when you add forms, what it will do is it will open up all your most recent forms. You're going to scroll down to the one that you want to insert. You'll click on it. And then you're going to click on the insert button here. Francine is asking, is sites an actual site for our own class? Oh, Google Sites, it's, it's, a, it's a website, so I'm using it in this case. You can use Google Sites for, for anything. You can house um, grammar or other things on Google Sites. I use Google Sites as kind of the placeholder for my digital breakout. So the two are connected. So once you create the Google Site, you're going to use that to put your form and your document in for the digital breakout. Now it's not in, it's not 100% necessary. You can always just give your students the link to the Google Doc and the link to the Google Form and then they can do them separately. I like to have them on the same page because then everything is more uh, apparent. Once you enter the form that uh, that I've you've selected so the breakout demo, you'll notice that there are these tiny little grabbers in the corner. Now if you want to make it, you know, the whole page, you're going to click on it and drag it into the position that you want. Okay. So that's what it looks like here. So that you make it a little bit more narrow and then you add your clues into it on the side. And this is what you end up with. This is a very simple activity depending on, on the level of your students. It'd probably take them 45 minutes to complete. Um, I would give them at least that if you have it. Um, three questions, working through it, and plus a reflection at the end would be a good 45 minutes. Okay. So other ideas, oops, other ideas, things you could use it with. You're teaching a class on Canadian citizenship. So you might have a um, a number code or a number clue, a specific date. Um, don't make it too easy, but of course it could be the year that Canada became a country, which is, who's going to get it first? Canada's birth date. What is Canada's, there you go. <laughs> good, 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 good. Right? Other things can be maybe a more advanced class. You might have how many sections are in the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. There might be directional clues. So you might include a Google um, map that says, um, so for this directional clues, begin in Canada's capital city, go to the province known for the Rocky Mountains, so there would be east. Then go to the city where Sidney Crosby was born. I can't remember where. <laughs> I got that clue somewhere and I forget what the answer was. Right. So the directional clues might be west, north, east, south, right? something like that. Okay. Or your clues could come straight out of a, um, for example, um, a YouTube video. So you can insert, this is a short heritage minute on Viola Desmond, and maybe the clue was the date that was referenced in the video. 
right? Or maybe the clue had something to do with the map of Canada. Or maybe the clue had something to do with... <laughs> it's all right, good. Cheryl knows about Sydney. Excellent. Or maybe the clue is maybe the number on the back of this $5 bill or the bird, right? Does anyone know the bird on the back of the $5 bill? I don't. I'd be impressed if you did. Does it say? It does. It's a... Uh... Oh, I can't read it. It's too blurry. <laughs> Kingfisher. Yes. <laughs> All right. So the clues are whatever you think that your students can handle that are going to be a little bit challenging. Um, oh, yeah. Like I said, it, 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 however you want to use your digital breakout, it could be a warmer at the beginning of the class to get your students engaged and to start asking questions. It could be used as a review. It could be used as whatever it is that you want. It's just a tool. It's, it's a tool like a worksheet used to be, only it's a little bit more interactive. Okay. Other ideas. Maybe your topic is finding a job. You can include a Vocaroo voicemail link that gives the time and date of an interview. So one of the numeric clues could be your time and date, where students would have to listen for the time and date. Uh, you can actually order the stages of a job interview. Um, there could be a number code or a letter code, the name of the cafe or the name of the street or the address where the interview took place. Um, Barbara's asking if you do this in class. Does each student have a computer with internet? We have access to laptops or computer labs. So if you had a laptop access, you could give assign one laptop to a group of three students. And that's how I see the activity working best or students working together in a lab. I mean, they could use their own personal devices to do it, um, but I prefer to have the tools ready for them to, to use it in learning class. Right. Display the smart board. Uh, Magda, actually, that's a pretty good idea. <laughs> you know, I was actually thinking of doing that as, as a whole class activity where I have the Google form on the smart board and students have to come up to me to enter the codes and I tell them if they're correct or not. And then eventually um, you can, they, they can look at the paper and do it. But I, I prefer to actually, if I can use the digital tools, to use the digital tools. Okay. So here's an example of some other tools that you can use. Get creative. It doesn't have to be as boring as the one I gave you. So maybe the information is here. It's, it's about my seat. <laughs> so there's actually a tool that you can use to create tickets, to create text messages, even to generate receipts. So all of these tools are available for you to insert into your own digital breakout. Yes, yeah, you can create your own tickets. Um, if you look at the, the resource list that I provided in the Google Doc, you can have access to all of this and more. There's a really cool ransom note generator that you could use as well. This is just a tip of the iceberg, right? So like I said, you could, and if you look at the everything here, these are all personalized. These are all things that I, I made myself. So, uh, yep. And here's a, a Twitter text generator tool as well. So you can have texts that they have to find the clue to something in. There's an answer, there's, a, there's something, there's a, a phone number. You can actually use a tool called ThingLink. And if you haven't used ThingLink yet, ThingLink.com, it's, it, it's a really interesting program as well that will allow you to embed videos and clues. You can see right here, this is, a, this is, a, this is the digital breakout form right here. And all the clues are based on parts of this uh, picture. ThingLink is a great tool. And I'm going to ask you. So digital breakouts, collaboration. Um, I'm not going to answer it. <laughs> what do you think the benefits could be for this kind of an activity? Just give me your answer in the chat bar. Interactive. 
engages students, keeps them interested. Maximum speaking, yes. Good. Critical thinking. Yes, yeah, Sylvia, I, Sylvia, I like the negotiating meaning part of it, especially when they're trying to work out the clues, because often in ESL, you're not doing brain teasers, right? So students are really trying to negotiate meaning. Well, what do you think this means? And how does this work? And, and how does this, you know, they're trying to make the meaning together. So there's lots of, you know, putting the heads together, right? Promotes dialogue, fun to do, do it in groups. Yeah, and the technical skills too. Uh, creating a digital breakout just requires, I'd say, about um, intermediate <laughs> technological know-how. So it's definitely something that we can do. Now, I'm cognizant of the time, so I'm going to pay very close attention here. Copy this. I am. I know how much time it can be to put together these kinds of forms. Um, and, you know, and sometimes we just have to, you know, bite the bullet and do it ourselves. But I've created a Google.com community. And I did originally have in mind to keep it focused on PBLA. And that's what I've got in there primarily right now. But I am hoping to include access to all these activities, any digital breakout that, that I make or choose your own adventure using Google Forms, I'm going to include in this group. It's totally yours. Um, Feel free to join it. Feel free just to kind of stop in and have a look. I'm hoping to, um, it's just kind of an informal Google group, Google community, where you can kind of just, like I said, have a look at some of the resources, share yours, add links. <laughs> okay. And why are you going to use this? You've given me all these answers here. Keep class interesting. It's an alternative to a worksheet. Get them involved. Right? You know your students. You can create the clues as, as, as their levels dictate, you know. Um, make them easier for lower levels. Uh, give them a bit of a challenge. Don't be afraid to challenge your higher level students. Get them to really think about something. Look at what other teachers have done as well to get some ideas. And it's just a way to kind of activate your students, make them think. Um, it, it's, it's a reading activity, but it's also a speaking activity <laughs> as well. And um, I am going to quote myself. I said this. Feel free to quote me on Twitter. <laughs> anyway, I just was recently at a job fair here in London at the Hilton Hotel. And I took that opportunity to speak with employers and ask them what kind of skills they're looking for in their new hires and critical thinking, collaboration, communica communication, um, technology, these kinds of skills uh, employers are looking for. So the more practice we can give, the more practice we can give our students in developing these critical thinking, collaboration, communication skills, the better prepared they are for the workplace. Is that quote on Twitter? That quote is on Twitter. I have quoted myself on Twitter, so <laughs> feel free to quote me uh, as much as you want to. All right. Francine says she agrees instead of spoon feeding them. Right. Um, and, and yeah, I don't want to give them the answers either. I really want the students to work something out uh, with each other, and I just stand back and, you know, point them in the direction if they need it, but hopefully they can. Um, they can do it themselves. All right, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Rabia. I think that's it. Unless there's any final self pledge. <laughs> Anna's asking me if I'm plagiarizing myself. I guess. I guess we can. No, I just. I just made this quote up now. So does that count? <laughs> Nisreen's asking if I'm giving any lectures in Ottawa. No, but I will be attending the TESOL Ontario conference in November to talk about some digital technology tools I'm using for project-based learning. So feel free to stop by and visit me. I'm doing both a poster presentation and a workshop. So I'm looking forward to meeting so many of you uh, in person. <laughs> it's hot here. It's so hot. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me now? 
We can hear you now. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Thank you very much, everyone, for being here with us tonight. And um, uh, just a reminder about an upcoming webinar. We have a general webinar, a small talk with a purpose, utilizing the Ford method to get noticed by Katina Dichel on uh, Sunday, October 29th. So we do not have apparently anything before that. But after that, right after that, we have our Tessel Ontario conference coming up and yay I'm so happy to join it I'm all sponsored already <laughs> good so yes um, and uh, well for this please fill out the survey it always helps us to improve our quality uh, in every aspect and PD certificates will be followed by this webinar thank you very much everyone for joining us tonight it was great thank you jen thank you once more for stepping in last minute you're always the savior <laughs> all right bye everyone good night thanks for coming out sorry about the uh, breakout room it was the first time we tried that in uh for tesla ontario webinars it's only just been a tool over the past couple of weeks we will perfect it. We'll get it working next time it comes around. But I really appreciate your patience. And uh, join that group that I mentioned. Add your thoughts. Add some resources. And um, let's all kind of grow together. <laughs> okay. So I guess that's it. <laughs>